However, before we plunge into the declaration, understanding what is significant. Molecule gas pedals are the Enormous Hadron Collider, LHC. Worked by CERN, is a 17M ring of superconducting magnets and the world's biggest and most strong atom smasher. It represents the zenith of human logical accomplishment. Truth be told, it's so strong that it can reproduce the very states of the universe's introduction to the world. Yet, could this machine intended to open the privileged insights of the universe hold the key to something undeniably more unfavorable? CERN, established in 1954, is one of the world's most esteemed research associations with 23 part states and large numbers of researchers. It's a center for coordinated effort and development. The LHC is CERN's lead project, yet it's only one section of a tremendous organization of gas pedals and tests. Envision a circuit, yet not for vehicles or ponies, this track is for subatomic particles, a test of skill and endurance in space. At the LHC, speeds up protons to almost the speed of light, sending them on a crash course that imitates the energy of the universe at the season of the enormous detonation. The impacts make temperatures multiple times more sultry than the center of the sun. Large numbers of magnets guide the protons on their excursion, while many-sided cooling frameworks keep the magnets at temperatures colder than space. The bars inside the LHC are made to crash at four areas around the gas pedal ring, relating to the places of four molecule finders, Chartbook, CMS, ALICE, and LHCB. Each fills a remarkable need, investigating various parts of molecule material science. Together, they go about as monster cameras catching depictions of these impacts. Researchers then, at that point, sift through the garbage searching for indications of the slippery Higgs boson, otherwise called the God particle, and different peculiarities, hints to the universe's key structure blocks. By considering the microcosm, we gain insights into the world. Yet with each answer comes another inquiry and with each revelation, another test. The LHC isn't simply a logical instrument. It's a demonstration of human interest and development. It epitomizes our determined quest for information and our longing to figure out the major powers that shape our universe. However, as we push the limits of what we realize, we should likewise consider the moral and existential questions that emerge in the consecrated corridors of CERN where the limits of human comprehension are continually pushed. A disclosure has arisen that sends a shudder down the spine of even the most prepared researchers. Brian Cox, a previous specialist at CERN and a voice of expert in the realm of molecule material science, has as of late made an announcement that has left the world both entranced and unfortunate. Cox's words reverberate with tormenting lucidity. The objective of CERN's huge Ron Collider is to reproduce a smaller than expected enormous detonation. Yes, you heard that right, a smaller than expected variant of the very occasion that brought forth our universe. The physicist additionally happened to make sense of the ramifications of this objective, highlighting the LHC's exceptional potential for making new revelations. This incorporates its capacity to open the mysteries of the Higgs boson and the investigation of dark matter, a puzzling substance that makes up a critical piece of the universe. Imagine holding the force of creation in your grasp, the capacity to invoke the actual substance of the UN universe. It's an enticing prospect. However, one loaded with risk. The smaller-than-expected huge explosion isn't simply a hypothetical idea. It's a substantial reality inside the LHC. The temperatures, the tensions, the crude energy all copy the circumstances of the universe's early stages. It's like remaining at the earliest days of recorded history, seeing the introduction of presence itself. However, with such power comes liability and the question poses a potential threat. Imagine a scenario in which something turns out badly. As a matter of fact, something went horribly off base back in 1978. The Russian physicist Anatoly Borsky encountered a debacle that would everlastingly alter the course of his life. In 1978, Borsky was dealing with the U-70 synchrotron at the Establishment for High Energy Physical Science in Proino, Russia. A glitch prompted his head, incidentally coming into the direct way of a proton bar. The bar, with a force that challenges perception, passed through his skull, entering the rear of his head and leaving through his nose. Borsky's experience was extraordinary. He saw a glimmer brighter than 1,000 suns yet had no worries. The bar's way resulted in a path of obliteration, consuming through tissue and bone, yet he remained cognizant and, surprisingly, 
strolled to the facility for treatment. The outcome was both astonishing and interesting. The bar's way caused confined tissue demise, prompting the deficiency of hearing in one ear and incomplete facial loss of motion. Yet incredibly, Borsky's scholarly abilities remained intact, and he proceeded with his logical vocation. This episode isn't simply an individual misfortune. However, a useful example that highlights the monstrous power and likely risk of molecule gas pedals. The dangers of an atom smasher like the LHC are not to be trifled with. The potential for unanticipated responses, the very texture of reality being manipulated, these are not the stuff of science fiction but genuine concerns voiced by some in established researchers. The universe's mysteries are easy toys as well as instruments of enormous power. One of the most disturbing and spellbinding concerns associated with the LHC's tests is the chance of making a smaller-than-expected dark hole. Dark openings are locales of space-time where gravity is solid to such an extent that not even light can get away from. They are grandiose vacuum cleaners, the devourers of stars, the mysterious substances that sneak in the shadows of our universe. That the LHC could make such an element even on an infinitesimal scale is stunning for the overall population and specialists the same. Might this dark opening at some point develop wildly, gulping the Earth from within? However, researchers at CERN have guaranteed that any dark opening made would be temperamental and vanish nearly immediately. The remote chance has lighted discussions, fears, and a feeling of wonderment at the power we employ. It's critical to comprehend how the LHC could make a dark hole. It has to do with the principal mechanics of molecule accelerators. When protons are crushed together at almost the speed of light, the energy delivered is colossal to such an extent that it twists the texture of space-time itself. Envision a trampoline extended rigid, and then a significant burden dropped onto it, the texture twists, bends, and assuming the weight is weighty enough, it could make a gloom so profound that anything close by would be brought into it. That is a short-sighted allegory for what could occur in the LHC. In the realm of quantum physical science where the guidelines of the universe are both strange and wonderful, there exists a hypothesis that extra aspects might be concealed inside our reality. If these aspects exist, the LHC's crashes could take advantage of them, making a gravitational channel that structures a minute dark hole. This perplexing dance of particles has even grabbed the eye of some world-famous researchers, particularly the late Stephen Hawking. In his book, he cautioned of a situation where the Higgs boson could become unsound at extremely high energy levels. This unsteadiness could prompt a disastrous vacuum rot, an inestimable occasion that wouldn't just annihilate the Earth however the whole universe itself. The regarded English cosmologist and astrophysicist Sir Martin Rees communicated his concerns about the tests led at CERN in his book on what's to come possibilities for mankind. He investigated the possible dangers related to atom smasher tests, including those at CERN. His words were not simply preventative. They were touched with a feeling of existential fear. He discussed a most noticeably terrible case situation where a disastrous investigation could make a condition called vacuum precariousness. This unsteadiness could, in principle, set off a stage progress that would wave through the actual texture of space-time, the result, a vast calamity that could overwhelm the whole universe. Rees's concerns were not restricted to hypothetical insights. He doled out a likelihood to these disastrous results, yet a low one. However, even an infinitesimal opportunity he contended ought to provide us opportunity to stop and think. The stakes are inconceivably high, and the edge for blunder is razor slim. The researchers at CERN have determined the probabilities, run the reenactments, and inspected the hypotheses to argue for the well-being of the LHC. As a matter of fact, Brian Cox himself recognized the significance of that's what dependable investigation. Perceiving there are boundless feelings of dread and concerns surrounding the activity of the LHC. However, he stressed that there are thorough well-being measures set up, broad audits, and protocols that guarantee the LHC's operations are led with the extreme attention to detail. Cox consoled that the energies included are well within what the Earth naturally experiences, and the chances of making a steady dark hole are cosmically low. Regardless of whether one were made, researchers say it would be so little and so shaky that it would vanish instantly of energy, a peculiarity anticipated by Stephen Hawking, known as Hawking radiation. It would be a brief snapshot of inestimable marvel, a brief look into the void and afterward gone. Some have gone further, speculating that the LHC's trials could open a portal to another universe or aspect. This idea, however generally excused by established researchers, 
has caught the creative mind of numerous and has turned into a subject of interest, dread, and even legends. What lies past our world? Might we at some point unintentionally release powers or substances that we don't comprehend? The thought of opening an entrance to damnation has even been sensationalized in different media, fanning the fire of vulnerability. Yet how did this thought come to be, and what's the significance here in the setting of logical investigation? The idea of equal aspects isn't new in material science. String hypothesis, a main possibility for a bound-together hypothesis of everything sets that there might be more than the recognizable three components of space and one of time. These extra aspects could be compactified or stowed away from our discernment. However, they could hypothetically be gotten to or then again uncovered under outrageous circumstances. Now, envision the LHC as an enormous key, opening doorways that have been fixed starting from the very beginning. When protons impacted energies up until recently never accomplished on Earth, they could in principle make waves or tears in the texture of space-time. These tears could open pathways to aspects beyond our own like breaks in a vast wall that separates us from the unknown. The results would be like if you were to drop a stone into a completely quiet lake. The impact makes swells, waves that spread out, connecting with all that they contact. With regards to the LHC, those waves could be aggravations in the aspects themselves, waves that spread out into domains we can't see or appreciate. Scientists at CERN rush to point out that the energies expected to make such a gateway are scientific a long ways beyond what the LHC can accomplish. Opening a door to another aspect remains firmly in the domain of sci-fi, yet the very reality that we can think about such potential outcomes, that we can explore the limits of our understanding and peer into the chasm of the unknown, is a demonstration of the power of human curiosity and resourcefulness. For the scientists at CERN, it should act as a quiet admonition that some doors once opened may uncover insights we are not ready to confront. The LHC, these tests, have not just raised logical and philosophical inquiries, but legal and moral ones too. The very act of reproducing the states of the universe's birth, of stepping into the primordial soup of existence and mixing it with our technological spoons, has ignited debates that transcend the boundaries of science. Are we playing God? Are we stepping on sacred ground, interfering with powers that were once the sole domain of the universe? These are not just analytical questions but deeply disturbing requests that challenge our very understanding of ethics and responsibility. The creation of a micro-black hole, for example, isn't simply a scientific curiosity but a potential Pandora's crate. Imagine a whirlpool sucking all that into its inevitable embrace but on a massive scale. Some legal researchers and ethicists have questioned whether humankind has the right to face such risks even in the pursuit of knowledge. Claims have been filed seeking to stop the LHC's tests, citing concerns about safety and the potential for devastating results. The debates rage on not just in courts but in the halls of academia, in the media, and around dinner tables. In 2008, a claim was recorded in Hawaii by Walter Wagner and El Sancho, who tried to end the LHC's activities. They argued that the collider could produce planet gobbling up black holes or never be seen peculiarities that could destroy not only the Earth but the entire universe. The claim requested a temporary restraining order against CERN, arguing that the organization had neglected to provide an environmental impact statement as required by U.S. regulation. However, the case was dismissed. It ignited a firestorm of debate and brought the LHC's true capability into sharp focus. Across the Atlantic in Germany, a professor named Otto Rossler filed a complaint with the European Court of Human Rights, claiming that the LHC violated the right to life guaranteed by the European Convention on Human Rights. Rossler's concerns were rooted in the fear that the LHC would be able to make tiny black holes that could grow wildly. Although both claims were unsuccessful, they formed part of a broader movement of concern and skepticism surrounding the LHC. They reflected a deeply ingrained anxiety about the unknown a fear that our quest for knowledge could lead us down a path from which there is no return. CERN was formed in the shadowed aftermath of the Second Great War when the world was still recovering, and the reverberations of obliteration were a haunting reminder of human folly. It was a time when the very structure holding the galaxy together was torn asunder. And from that chaos, a group of visionary scientists dared to dream. They envisioned of a place where the boundaries of nations would dissolve, where the pursuit of knowledge would be a beacon of hope. 
They imagined a laboratory, a cauldron where the secrets of the universe could be explored, where the secrets of existence could be unlocked. Hence, CERN was conceived as an offspring of war and wisdom, a symbol of what humankind could achieve when driven by curiosity rather than conflict.